I'm John Brickley here on ESPN.com. News out of Chicago as the Bulls, who've had a quiet NBA free agency to this point, bringing back reserve Aaron Brooks to a one-year deal. Want to welcome in Nick Friedel, covers the Bulls for ESPNChicago.com. Brooks averaging just under 12 points last season, uh, Nick, but it's been a quiet offseason for the Chicago team. They did resign Jimmy Butler. They brought back Mike Dunleavy. So how does this bode well then, the same team as last year for new head coach Fred Hoiberg? John, there are a lot of angry Bulls fans right now in Chicago. <laughs> I can <laughs> imagine. You look at this yeah, you look at this team and you say, well, how did they improve themselves? And that's the issue. I, I think Fred Hoiberg uh, comes in in a great situation for a rookie head coach because this team, especially within the front office, they still believe that the championship window for this group of Rose and Butler and Gasol, uh, it hasn't closed completely. But when you look around the league uh, and, and Aaron, the Aaron Brooks move, is one thing, but when you look around the league and you see the moves that Cleveland has made in the East and you see the moves that San Antonio has made and Dallas has, has made in the West, look at the Bulls, it just seems like they're kind of standing in place, and, and the Brooks move underscores that. Are the Bulls a very good team? Yeah. Do I think they're going to have success in Hoiberg's first season, and can that offense get into some kind of rhythm early on? Yeah, I think it can, but – are you really believing that this group can go into next year with a, a major chance to to win a title? I, I don't believe so as we sit here and talk in the middle of July. I know they've had some pieces coming back with Jimmy Butler. They've also drafted Bobby Portis, got him inked to a deal. And I'm going to paraphrase Rick Patino. Michael Jordan's not coming through that door. Scottie Pippen's <laughs> not coming through that door. So what other options does this Bulls team have to go up against LeBron James and the Cavs and try to dethrone them after finishing third in the Eastern Conference last year. John, the saddest part for the Bulls is they have to hope, like the rest of the East does, that when playoff time comes rolling along in April and May, that LeBron gets hurt. Because aside from that, as we saw in the finals last year, LeBron dragged that team without Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love through two games away from a title. I don't see even with the Bulls' solid core intact. And as you mentioned, they bring back Butler, a move that they had to make because if they didn't pay him, somebody else uh, was going to. Same goes for Mike Dunleavy. This is a solid group. I, I just don't see what that missing piece is. Uh, I go back a year ago to the Bulls missing out on Carmelo Anthony and him staying in New York. I, I think that was a guy that might have helped them, especially offensively when they got into these droughts. But – Looking ahead to next year, even with Hoiberg's system in place, Cleveland is the clear-cut favorite with LeBron and a healthy Love and Irving in the fold. And I just don't think that the Bulls have enough firepower to get past them in a seven-game series. A lot of question marks for the Chicago Bulls team, despite the fact they brought in a new head coach in Fred Hoiberg, finished third last year in the conference. Nick Friedel of ESPNChicago.com with the very latest on the Bulls signing of Aaron Brooks and what Chicago does moving forward in this offseason. I'm John Brickley with your latest NBA headline here on ESPN.com.